Future of Monte Tank Davis is one of boxing's biggest stars and a stone-cold knockout artist. But top contender and trash talk champion Rolando Rolly Romero wants his shot. I'm a knock tank out and as simple as that. On May 28th. Hold on, Ronnie, this ain't what you want. That's all you do is talk. Davis versus Romero for the 135-pound world title, Saturday, May 28th, live on pay-per-view. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the legendary Mayweather Boxing Club here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Coming up on Saturday, May 28th, from the famed Barclays Center in Brooklyn, big-time boxing is back as the five-time three-division world champion, Cervante Tank Davis, one of the most electrifying fighters in boxing today. He puts his lightweight crown on the line against the unbeaten contender, the very determined Rolando Roli Romero. That, our main event on Showtime Pay-Per-View next Saturday, May 28th. You can purchase tickets at BarclaysCenter.com or you can watch the pay-per-view live at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific time. Our co-main event going to be an eventful matchup. This one in the middleweight division as the two-division world champion at Islandi, the American Dream Lada. He will go head-to-head -head in a matchup against Gary Spike O'Sullivan. Gary Spike O'Sullivan always comes forward and looks to bring the fight to Laram. Awesome. We have a matchup at 154 with the unbeaten 21-year-old sensation Jesus Mono Ramos. He has revenge on his mind because the man who he's going to be stepping inside the ring with, Luke Santa Maria, defeated his uncle Abel Ramos back in February here in Las Vegas. And we will start off with the matchup between Eduardo Ramirez and Luis Melendez, a matchup between Mexico against Puerto Rico. But also on the undercard, you have super welterweight contender who is looking to continue to climb the ranks, Luis Cuba Arias, who's 19-3-1, he will be in action off TV as well. This is a loaded car from top to bottom, ladies and gentlemen, presented by Premier Boxing Champions, promoted by Mayweather Promotions, GTD Promotions, and TGB Promotions. And now we're joined alongside by Luis Cuba Arias, who has a record of 19-3-1. You saw him last year on pay-per-view when he defeated Jared Hurd on the undercard of Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul in Miami. Luis, thank you very much for joining us. And you've been in camp with that is Landy Lara and been with Ismael Salas. Tell us about what that's done for you in your career. Well, I'm just I'm just happy to be part of this, you know, great fight. You know, first off, you know, thanks to Mayweather Promotions and everyone for, you know, keep believing in me. And yeah, um, I moved to Las Vegas after the herd fight. You know, me and me and uh, Salas connected very well and we had a great performance, you know. So um, I've been training with, with Lara. We actually just got done sparring earlier, this, you know, before all of this. And camp's been amazing. You know, I've been great. My weight's been great. Uh, the rounds have been great. I, I sparred with Jesse Vargas, one champion, and went to spar to Laura. So the camp's been amazing, and, and, and it'll show. You've been around. I remember doing your fights when you fought on the undercard of Mayweather Canelo off TV. That was back in September of 2013. But do you feel like you're a young 31 years of age? Because I feel like you've been talked about for a while. You had that moment against Jared Hurd, a little bit of stumble in your last fight. But you've always been in the mix over the past few years. Yeah, no, I mean, just, just being a part, you know, I, I started with being promoted by one of the greatest fighters ever. So just my name being attached, that helped me out a lot. But, you know, my kids don't think I'm young, but I do feel young in the ring. You know, uh, I had a long layoffs throughout my career. Uh, I sat out for two years prior to the hurt fight. And, um, I, like, you know, I, I don't feel old. You know, I actually feel young. You know, I actually feel better and better with my wins and my losses. Like, as the most, as more rounds that I go, the easier as it is. You know, I'm sparring 10 and fighting 10. I've been fighting 10, 12 rounds for, like, five years now. So now I, just, I feel well seasoned, you know, I still feel young, but I definitely feel well seasoned where now that the moment that I get a title fight is going to be like, it took so long, you know, but I'm going to be best, definitely ready, you know, the opponents and the, and the records show it. Now, obviously, what did you take away from the Jermel Charlo Brian Castaño fight last week that we saw on Showtime? Unbelievable fight, Charlo unifying 154. Um, I thought I thought it was amazing. Uh, I have to give big props to, to to Charlo and to his trainer Derek James. Um, the big difference in that fight was that Charlo came with an obvious different game plan. It just looked like Castano just came to do the same thing: just walk forward, throw punches, and throw the left hook to the body and the left up head. But he didn't do anything different. But I saw a difference from Charlo from out the gate. You know, he was more defensively responsible. You know, he was making sure that he was throwing with Castano, but he was slipping and moving and and you know he fought a perfect fight he fought the perfect fight and made the perfect adjustment so uh congrats to him and his team because that was that was a, a good display of of 
high level fighting. So where do you feel like you fall in the mix? Assuming you handle the business at hand next Saturday, May 28th from Barclays Center in Brooklyn, where do you feel you sort of stack up with, this is a loaded division. We saw Sebastian Fundora beat Erickson Lubin here in Las Vegas last month. A tremendous battle that was, but where do you feel you fall in the mix? Because 154 is so loaded, especially when it comes to premier boxing champions in here on Showtime. I mean, I think I'm right there. You know, um, Prior prior to me beating Hurd, if it wasn't Hurd, would have been at the top of the list. So I took out the boogeyman right away. The only thing I feel like I'm missing is another is another champion. And I've been calling out Tony Harrison <laughs> since I beat Hurd. So if I beat another former champion, I'm riding the mix for a number one contender or a title shot. So once I take care of business next week, you know I feel in great shape. I, I want the Tony Harrison fight. It makes the most sense. He's not going to get a title shot right now, and neither am I. So we might as well get it on, get it shaken, and give the fight the fight fans what they want. And once I beat Tony Harrison, then I'll have a unified champion, a former champion, and they'll have no they'll have no one else to doubt me. No one else has a resume than me. <laughs> like no no one on that list on the top 54 pounders have the better resume than me. You know, I've been on every network. I fought all top guys at 160, jumped at the 54, fought the boogeyman right away. So I'm, I'm right there. You know what I mean? Like, I've had my setbacks, but I'm right there. So once I get this guy out the way, I want Tony Harrison, and I'm going to keep saying it, and I'm going to keep fucking up his, all his stuff and, 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 and just messing up his, his, his stuff until he fights me. You know, and I feel like that makes the most sense. So give me another champion, and then I'm ready for, for whoever. All right, Luis, we'll let you work out here at the Mayweather Boxing Club. Luis Cuba, adios, ladies and gentlemen. Fighting words towards Tony Harrison. We'll watch Luis Cuba, adios, work out here in Las Vegas. Thank you very much, Luis. Appreciate it. Luis Cuba, adios. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, Gervonta Davis, Rolando Rolio Romero, a lightweight showdown, going to be a tremendous matchup. Both men undefeated. Someone's always got to go as we watch Luis Cuba, adios, work out here in Las Vegas. Watching the Rolando Romero workout as we inch closer to Saturday, May 28th on Showtime Boxing Pay-Per-View. Inside the ring right now, super welterweight contender Luis Cuba Arias. 
who is under the guidance of the Mayweather Promotions banner. He's being trained alongside by Edislandi Lana, by Ismail Salas. As you heard him say, assuming he's victorious next Saturday, May 28th, he has his sights set on Tony Harrison, and he believes that fight could very well come to fruition. You know that neither man have any love lost between each other, and they will square off. They hope to square off, but Luis Arias in separate action on Saturday, May 28th. Later today, you will hear from and watch Rolando Roli Romero, the number one contender to Gervonta Davis's championship workout. Also, Ed Islandi Lada, the middleweight champion, his opposition on Saturday, May 28th will be Gary Spike O'Sullivan. Also, Jesus Ramos, the 21-year-old knockout sensation at 154 pounds, 18 and 0 with 15 knockouts. He is in action as well. We will hear and watch Jesus Ramos work out as he will match up against Luke Santa Maria. But back to Luis Cuba Arias working out here at the Fame Mayweather Boxing Club in Las Vegas. Short, compact, a lot of pressure, a lot of punches, good defense, a lot of experience, a lot of rounds. I'm a, young, up, you? I'm a young vet. There's a reason why guys, you know, they're not going to say yeah to me right away. High risk. I think I got a little reward, but <clears throat> I got fluid. There's a reason why I'm on paper me fights. Pay-per-view fights, big cards. When I'm on a card, I'm throwing. You know, when I, I'm, I'm throwing all night. As soon as that bell rings to the end, I go out on my shield every fight. I don't shy away from nobody. I'm willing to throw down with anybody. I'm not in a boring fight. Even the fights I lost, they were all bombs, bombs, and real fighting. So, you know. It's part of the journey. 
So with all that experience, you and Harrison should be a barn burner now. Huh? Well, as long as he can stand, he don't like pressure. And he can't really punch. When's the last time he hurt somebody? You know, he's a mover. He's a mover, and I'm and I'm a, a stalker. You know, he had a guy in front of him for 10, 12 rounds, whatever they call it. And he couldn't even buck him. You're talking about Brian Corella. No, the guy he just fought. The Spanish guy he just fought. Oh, Garcia. Sergio yeah. Garcia. Garcia was right in front of him. And he was just jabbing him and right handing him to death. If Garcia was strong enough, look, he would have hurt him. I'm strong enough to hurt him. That's why he's shying away from the fight. Because he knows that I'm strong enough to hurt him. I already beat him. So he already knows what it feels like to fight me. But now it's different because we got them little gloves on. And he know I'm gonna come with that shit. So. so you already beat him in the amateur. Yeah, I already beat him. It doesn't mean a lot of these guys know me because I was a top guy in the amateurs. Things haven't been perfect for me in the pros just yet. But I ain't done. Every loss that I had, I came back. I, I, like I said, I just beat the boogeyman less than a year ago. What's the issue between you and Harris? There ain't no issue. I just, you know, I just felt like I needed a, a champion. You know, I wanted. I, I said it after the fight. After I beat Heard, I said, okay, I wanted to fight Heard at 54 because I wanted to move down. After I beat one unified champion, the only way to get to a title shot quicker is by fighting another one. The only one that was available was Harrison. Williams, you know, was, I don't know what he was doing, but he wasn't available. Harrison was available. So whatever, you know, I didn't get the decision I wanted the last fight, but it was at 3 o'clock, it don't matter. That guy wasn't even a 54. This next guy that I'm fighting next weekend, he been fighting at 54 his whole career. So we gonna see how I do with someone who's a legitimate 54. I'm in great shape. I've been sparring nothing but champions. Everybody in this motherfucker know who I am because they know I'm a real fighter. So once I get this guy out the way, I'm, like I said, I want Harrison. Luis, what's the story behind the duck? <laughs> he's a duck. It's like that's the story behind it. Is he's a duck. He can say whatever the hell he want. I saw with my own two eyes. Me and Florida are cool, and that's one thing you know. What I mean, it's always says about who you know. Me and Florida have a great relationship. You know, we don't talk every day. You know, he don't answer my phone call every day. But when we do, we're cool. Floyd known me since I was young. Before I was even pro. So Floyd, when he Floyd called me and I straight up asked Floyd, Floyd, I want to fight Harrison. You let Isha Smith fight him. That was years ago. Let me get that fight. And I saw Floyd make the phone call. Yay. He called upstairs. Yay. Make it, I want them to fight. It wasn't because of me. So why the fight didn't happen? It wasn't because of me, because I was the one that asked him. And he was talking shit online saying he was gonna fight me. And when I wrote him and asked him, hey, yo, uh, cause we could have fought on tank, other car. I said, hey, yo, did they offer you a fight? Did they offer you, you know? He just, he read my message and didn't say nothing. So then I, I took, I, I made the decision to go fight off TV versus someone who I shouldn't have been fighting. I should have just waited for the big fight. But I was like, like I said, I'm a fighter, man. Whoever they put in front of me, fuck it, let's fight. You know, so I made that decision and, and I caught the bat in the bullet, you know? Cause I, even though I thought I won the fight, it was whatever, it shouldn't, it was a fight that shouldn't have happened. But it happened at 3 o'clock, so it don't matter, you know? So it is what it is, you know, and I ended up not getting a fight. And he ended up fighting someone who lost the same day that I lost. So why he ain't fighting me in April? It ain't me. Do you feel like you got to get some momentum back after, that, after your last fight? I mean, I, just, I, mean, I, I, mean, I, I felt like I, I lost a, a little momentum because I took an L, you know? But nobody saw the fight. Who saw the fight? You know, people were writing me like, yo, you fought? I was outside and reporters were coming like, hey, what's, what's going on? Oh shit, you just fought? So it's like, I didn't really lose that much momentum because I ain't really been seen, even this fight. Like, had I even won that fight, no one would've saw it. Was had it? I went to Mexico and fought a duck just to get a W real quick, no one would've saw it. The You're saying it's time, irrelevant. You're saying that fight's irrelevant. I, I mean, it, it, it was more an experience, but it, it really was irrelevant. It wasn't a guy in the weight class, and it was at three o'clock. What? Well, like you want to make a statement in this fight? Yeah, I mean, I, I, like I said, I feel like I'm fighting someone who's more in the weight class. I feel like I need to make the statement so I can go get that big fight. You know, because I, even though I beat her, that's the last time people saw me. So the last time I was on prime time, I fought an animal and I beat him. 
convincing me. And now, and, and like I said, if it wasn't for me beating her, where would her stand right now at the at the top of that 54 division? He'd be at the top. You can't even say that. You can't even say that's a lie because that's that's facts. If her wouldn't have lost to me, he'd be the top dog right now. He'd be fighting Charlo for all the belts. So, I mean, I'm right there, man. I'm right there. You know, like, I'm not going to quit. My team believes in me. Once my trainer looks at me in the face and was like, you know what, man? I don't think, I don't know. Once I hear that from my trainer, then I'll be like, okay, you know what? Maybe, maybe let's start looking at lane, another lane. But right now, man, my trainers believe in me. My trainer believes in me. The people that are really buying me believe in me. And they know I can fight. All these fighters, a lot of these guys know me. We've known each other for years. They know I can fight. So, like I said, I just got to get that another W that, that I need to get. And then I need to get that big fight with a former champion. And then, I guarantee you, I'll be fighting for a world title. Luis, for, Luis, for the audience, who are you going to be fighting next Saturday on May 28th? Uh, I'm fighting, uh, uh, the guy's name is Jimmy Williams. I think he's a uh, 19 and 7, maybe 20 and 7 veteran guy. He's been fighting at 54 most of his career. You know, a solid guy. He's got a lot of rounds in him. You know, again, though, off TV. You know, so, but this guy is, like I said, we're going to go good to schedule for 10. I feel like it's someone that I need to improve on. We made the improvements in the gym. I've been sparring a lot more rounds. I, I went from sparring Jesse Vargas, get, helping him get ready, and then right into camp with Laura and the other guys over at Silas Gym. Silas got nothing but world champions in and out of there. So, like I said, the, the, the work is there. You know, my trainer thinks I'm better now than I was for the hurt fight. So I just got to go prove it. You know, the, the hard work is done. It's just time to just make the weight and, and shine next week. So, Luis, you like being able to actually throw the duck. That was my idea. <laughs> actually, I, I ordered. I ordered. I ordered on Amazon two bags. I got like fifty ducks up for my kids. <laughs> my kids. Got, I was gonna throw like the whole bag full of ducks, but then you know I didn't want to walk with a bag. I didn't have a bag with me, so I just put like three or four in my in my pocket. But yeah, it was my idea. You know. You got what I mean? that, right? Were you surprised at the reaction or no? I mean, not really, but he, he did what he was, was supposed to do, you know what I mean? But shit, he lucky, he lucky I did that. No one even knew he was fighting. People were like, oh shit, you fighting this weekend? So he really should be thanking me instead of being getting mad because it was because of what I did that I put his name out there. Shit, he went viral because of me. How willing, how willing are you to step into, let's say, uh, the B side of a tune-up fight for somebody like Fundora or Tim Zhu or one of those, one Man, of those other I'm, guys I'm, that are up and coming that you may have to go through to get that title shot that you I, want? I can't. A beggars can't be choosers, man. I can't sit up here and say that I want top dogs and that I want to fight for a title, and then when they be like, okay, well, you can fight this guy, and then me start making excuses. You know, I can't do that. But I just did that last summer. Versus her, came in on the B side. They he needed to tune up, and you see what happened. So, like I said, I'm I'm willing and able to fight anybody, anybody at the at the top of the division that's willing to get you things, make things shaken, put the fight together. I'm willing to take it. You can ask Leonard, anybody that's ever dealt with me. I've never said no to a fight. Never. Wasn't your last fight at like 168 or something? And you no, the guy, the, the opponent was a guy fighting 68. Uh, uh, it was Vaughn, right? Vaughn, 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 Vaughn usually fights 68, 60. And the fight was like at like 57. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's just, a, you know. Still above I, your I weight I said class, just let it go, yeah. I came in at 155 and he hit 57 on the dot, but he was like, you know, he was just a lot, it was the physical, you can feel it in the sixth, seventh, eighth round. Which is why they gave him the fight because I won the first five, six rounds, easy. I mean, I lost a point, was whatever, but I won the first half of the fight easy, you know? But now like I said, now I got a, a, a guy who's more of the size of the weight class, so we're gonna see what I really I can do. So I'm looking forward to next weekend. Like I said, we're in great shape. The, the, the camp's been phenomenal. I've known for a while that I was gonna fight on this card, and it's time to go. It's time to prove it and, and, and get the big fight after. Sí, sí, sí. Como yo dije, hasta que mi entrenador me mira en la cara y me dice que, que en realidad no sé si la puedes hacer, puedo cambiar. Pero ahorita mi entrenador cree que yo estoy en lo mejor que he estado. Él, él, le gusta mi movimiento, estamos haciendo guantes con, con Lara, buenos rounds, hicimos 10 asaltos hace una, dos semanas, 8, 10, 6, todo. Y estamos así, haciendo un buen trabajo. 
So, haciendo trabajo con personas así me da la motivación y ya sé que yo puedo competir con toda esta gente. Yeah, yeah so estoy bien. I think it's gonna be a real good fight, man. I think a lot of people uh, are 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 gonna underestimate Roley's physicality and his strength. You know, I think this is gonna be a fight where Tank is not gonna be the stronger. I mean, he usually is a smaller guy, but he usually is always a stronger guy. And and with Roley, man, with his with his with his like jujitsu background and all that, he's like a real rough guy. So. It's going to be real interesting, man. I, I'm, I'm going to see how, how, how this is. We're going to see how, how highly skilled Tank is going to be. You know, but it's going to be a great fight. You know, I think it's definitely one that, that people should definitely order. They're sleeping on it just because Roley's not so much on one. But Roley's a big, strong guy, man. And he's going to he's going to test Tank in ways that he really hasn't been tested. Really, just because of the physicality part. So it's going to be a great fight, man. I think people should definitely tune in. You know, it's going to be it's a great, it's a stacked card, top to bottom. Actually, do you remember it all, Roley? You know, years back, coming into this gym, coming into the gym to well, Vegas. I mean, I had seen him a little bit. With no bit. respect for all these Yeah, he didn't really care. Roley, that's the thing. Roley's like a, he really a fighter, you know what I mean? Like, he don't care. Like, come on, let's spar, let's fight, whatever. He He's really down to throw down. Like, even when he fights, like, you can see he's trying to throw hard. And he, he, he's trying to throw down. So, I think that aspect of his fight is going gonna, is gonna to be real interesting because... He's gonna come out the gate trying to let Tank know that in order for him to win this fight, he gotta go and show Tank I'm not scared of him. You know, so yeah, I feel like that's what he's gonna do. So it's gonna make things real interesting because Tank gotta be, you know, he's gonna be smart. He's real, we've seen what Tank can really do, you know, but we gotta see what he's gonna be able to do with someone who's just crazy and don't really care. You know, so, you see, I mean, I, I'm looking forward to it. That's gonna be a great fight. I'm gonna be right there. Thank you, Louis. Good luck on your fight. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I think Charlo should be pound for pound. I think I think he definitely he showed that he's pound for pound material. I mean, he's, I don't think he's number one right now, but I think he should be in the discussion between six, seven, and ten. He should be in that mix some way somehow. He's he's beaten every belt he got. He got it by knocking out another champion. You know, he that's the second rematch where he's clearly shown that he's he's you know. He's not so like, you know, one-sided where he feels like he knows everything, where he came the second fight, listened to his team, and made the proper adjustments. That's two times in a row. And everything he said he was gonna do, he's done it. So I feel like he's definitely a pound for pound fighter and, and I just man, that fight was phenomenal from, from from round one to round ten. And and from a fighter's perspective, I could see the proper adjustments he made. So he definitely pound for pound. That's it. Appreciate it. Again, you're watching the workout of Luis Cuba Arias, who is a super welterweight contender. He's fighting off television next Saturday night. If you are fortunate to be able to be in attendance at Barclays Center, big time boxing is back in Brooklyn. Compliments of Premier Boxing Champions, Mayweather Promotions. Showtime Championship Boxing, GTD Promotions, and also TGB Promotions. You will see Luis Arias fighting on the undercard, but you heard without a doubt that he has his sights set after this fight, if he's successful, to potentially take on Tony Superbad Harrison. And borrowing Harrison's nickname, there is some super bad blood between the two without question. And ladies and gentlemen, do not forget, Gervonta Davis and Rolando Rolly Romero comes your way on Saturday, May 28th from Barclays Center in Brooklyn. You can watch the pay-per-view next Saturday, May 28th, starting at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific time. It is going to be a tremendous night of boxing on this, a Memorial Day weekend. You have the five-time three-division world champion, Gervonta Tank Davis who is undefeated, taking on a fellow unbeaten contender, Rolando Roli Romero, as both men have bad blood between the two. There's been a lot of back and forth trash talk between 
both adversaries, and it'll come to fruition next Saturday, May 28th from Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Trevante Davis has been quite successful at Barclays Center and knocked out Jose Pedraza back on January 14th, I believe, of 2017. He has been a world champion for some years, and Trevante Davis is looking to cement his status as being the top lightweight in the world and he has to be able to get past Rolando Roli Romero. We are going to see Romero work out in about an hour or so. Also here to come today, you're going to watch the super welterweight contender. He's only 21 years of age, 18 and 0 with 15 knockouts coming off of a very impressive knockout victory over Vladimir Hernandez. I'm talking about Jesus Mono Ramos who happens to be the nephew of Abel Ramos. Abel Ramos just lost to Luke Santa Maria back in February. So Ramos has revenge on his mind and retribution for his family as he's going to be taking on the man who beat his uncle and Luke Santa Maria. That will not be an easy fight whatsoever for Jesus Mono Ramos. Also, our co main event, Ed Eslandi Lara, the American dream himself, the middleweight champion who's now campaigning here at 160. Wiped out Thomas Lamana last year. Now he's back in action. He will take on Gary Spike O'Sullivan as he defends his championship. And you just heard from Luis Cuba Arias, who's been in camp with Edislandi Lada. They are under the guidance of Ismael Salas, who is one of the most esteemed trainers in boxing today. He also trains the likes of Jordanis Ugas, the, the Bartholomew brothers at one point, and also Edislandi Lada and Luis Cuba Arias. And you heard Luis Arias say that if he's successful next Saturday, he wants a matchup against Tony Harrison. Plus, we have a matchup between Eduardo Ramirez and Luis Melendez. What that does is that reignites the rivalry between Mexico and Puerto Rico. Now, if you're going to be in the New York area, it's a holiday. So a lot of people are going to be traveling to New York and Manhattan and Brooklyn. You can purchase tickets at BarclaysCenter.com. Or if you're going to have family and friends over for a cookout and grilling out, nothing like watching big-time prize fighting outside with family and friends. You can watch it live on Showtime Pay-Per-View, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific Time, 4 fun fights coming your way, and it's all highlighted by one of the most, this guy's can't miss, Cervante Davis coming off of a win back in December over Isaac Cruz. Rolando Romero now gets his opportunity as Romero has vowed that he's going to knock out Cervante Davis in one round or less. Awesome. We're going to be talking with the trainer of Rolando Romero as well and also various members of his team to get into his mindset as we are 11 days away until Gervonta Davis and Rolando Romero collide for the lightweight championship of the world. If you've seen their press conference from back in Brooklyn at Barclays Center, both men have very unique personalities. And I would even go as far as to say that this is the most that I have seen Cervante Davis antagonized and chastised by any opponent. So how is Cervante going to deal with someone coming at him with such verbal barbs and try to play the mental warfare game with him? I've never seen anything like that. Is he going to get him angry? How does he fight angry? Already as it is, Cervante Davis is a lethal puncher. So one cannot mistake the dynamite and the power in the hands of Gervonta Davis. And now we are joined alongside by the undefeated 18 and 0, 15 knockouts, 21 years of age, Jesus Mono Ramos. Jesus, thanks so much for joining us, my friend. It is great to see you, your entire family. But as we are 11 days away until you take on Luke Santa Maria, give us your thoughts on our training camp has been. You look fantastic. You're now 21 years of age. I met you when you were 18, and now you are of legal age. Not that you do any of that stuff, but what's it like now as you are getting ready for your matchup against Luke Santa Maria on Showtime pay-per-view? You know, um, everything is going good, you know, in training camp. Training camp has been real, real good. Um, I feel ready. Like you said, I, I look good. I feel good. Um, you know, we added uh, Larry Wade to strength and conditioning. So our team is growing. You know, we're getting better. Like you said, I met you when I was 18. So little by little, man, little by little, we're, we're, we're expanding our team and we're getting better and better. It's not surprising that you added Larry Wade to your team because as I'm looking at you now, this is the most shredded in, you know, cut that I've ever seen you. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair to say. You know, um, 
we've been realizing that and, and I feel good. Like I said, I feel strong and I'm ready for Luke Santa Maria. Now, Luke Santa Maria is a guy who beat your uncle back in February. You actually fought that night as well. You defeated Vladimir Hernandez, but do you feel like there is a sense of family pride on the line? Do you want to get retribution, revenge? You do not pay attention to any of that stuff. I don't really pay attention to none of that stuff because I don't feel like he beat my uncle. I feel like it was a close fight, but I don't feel like he beat my uncle. He was hurt two, two, three times in that fight, and I don't feel like he did enough to to beat him. But um, you know, it is what it is. Now I have to now I have to fight him, and um, I feel like he's got kind of a false confidence coming into this fight because he feels like because he beat my uncle, he can beat me, and I don't I don't feel that way. You know, I don't feel like that's going to help him at all. The one item that I've always told you that impresses me is how you systematically break down your opponents. But I love your punching power. Where do you get that from? Uh, you know, my mom and dad argue all the time. My mom says from her and my dad says from me. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I guess it's, I'm just naturally, you know, gifted with that. But, yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it comes natural to me. Fighting on pay-per-view, Barclay Center in Brooklyn. Big time boxing is back. You've seen many events there, but what is it like for you knowing that you're going to be on the undercard of Gervonta Davis and Rolando Romero, a fight that a lot of fight fans are looking forward to in the lightweight division? You know, it's a big, this is a big card, you know, like you said, um, everybody's looking forward to this one. You know, Gervonta Davis, he has a lot of fans, and now I get to be on his undercard and on Showtime for the first time. So it's a great privilege to me, and um, I'm not taking that lightly. I'm coming, I'm coming at my best, um, and I'm ready to perform. What statement are you looking to make to signal to the rest of the super welterweight division? You know, I got to make a big statement. Um, I got to show that I'm here, you know, I'm here to stay. That, um, you know, Vladimir Hernandez wasn't just a one, you know, a one time thing. You know, that, that win is, is going to lead to bigger things. And that's why I got to show, um, next Saturday. As usual, we'll let you go and work out here at the Fame Mayweather Boxing Club. We look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you, man. It was good. That is good seeing you too. The undefeated Jesus Mono Ramos. We're going to watch him work out here in Las Vegas. We continue with the workouts as we get closer to Gervonta Davis, Rolando Romero. 11 days away, Saturday, May 28th from Barclays Center in Brooklyn on Showtime Pay-Per-View brought to you by Mayweather Promotions, GTD Promotions, and TGB Promotions and presented by Premier Boxing Champions. Away to the ring we go as we're going to watch Jesus Ramos, who's undefeated and will take on a very determined Luke Santa Maria workout here in Las Vegas. Vegas.
Watching members that are going to be fighting on the Gervonta Davis Rolando Romero Showtime pay per view boxing card next Saturday, May 28th. Inside the ring, the undefeated super welterweight contender, just 21 years of age, Jesus Mono Ramos from Casa Grande, Arizona, as his adversary will be none other than Luke Santa Maria, who incidentally happened to defeat his uncle, Abel Ramos, back in February here in Las Vegas. Awesome. You just heard the news that Jesus Ramos is working with famed strength and conditioning coach Larry Wade, who happens to be the former strength and conditioning coach of now, the now-retired Showtime Sean Porter, along with Badu Jack and Caleb Plant. And now, Jesus Ramos has added Larry Wade to his camp with strength and conditioning and it is evident in terms of the size and the muscle that Ramos has put on. Ramos, a part of next Saturday's Gervonta Davis, Rolando Romero Showtime pay-per-view coming your way from Barclays Center in Brooklyn. It's great to be back in Brooklyn at Barclays Center, a venue that has been the home of many significant events over the past 10 years since it opened up back in 2012 and now Gervonta Davis once again back center stage with his name on the marquee his opponent Rolando Romero also we're going to be talking with at his Landi Lada coming up in a few moments also he's now fighting at 160 this will be his second fight I believe in that division after coming off of a victory over Thomas Lamana last May and then we'll talk with the unbeaten contender in Roly Romero who is certainly a unique personality, and we look forward to talking with Roly to get his thoughts on his showdown against Javante Davis. And let's just say that neither man have been friendly towards one another. I'm talking about Javante Davis and Rolando Romero. As we continue to watch the workout for Jesus Mono Ramos, who's undefeated at 18 0 with 15 knockouts here in Las Vegas. We're at the Mayweather Boxing Club.
Those of you at home that are watching the Jesus Ramos workout, I hope you're able to really hear the thud because sitting here ringside, he, it's like a baseball bat hitting a pumpkin. That is how loud it is. My goodness, the power that he has. And uh, not just because he's a dear friend, but I think he certainly got some help in the power department. Compliments to Larry Wade, one of the best strength and conditioning coaches in all of combat sports today. But Jesus Ramos back in the ring working out with his father as he prepares for his matchup against Luke Santa Maria. That is a very determined Jesus Ramos Jr., the undefeated 21-year-old who is 18-0 with 15 knockouts. As Jesus Ramos getting set for his matchup against Luke Santa Maria coming up on Saturday, May 28th, 11 days from now, a part of a loaded pay-per-view undercard. Underneath, Cervante Davis and Rolando Roli Romero, four exciting fights coming your way. And back to watching Jesus Ramos work out, who's 18-0 with 15 knockouts.
life. Good work, good work, good work. I mean, I don't feel like he beat Monaco. Um, I don't feel like he did enough, but um, we still gotta get that payback. You know, he, at the end of the day, he took the decision, so it's important for me to get that back. And and really to like gain or honor seeing Mahalo Monaco and just kind of like you know, getting that respect. Yeah, you know, like I said, I'm gonna take that back. You know, I'm gonna take that back. I mean, it's not like you know, I'm gonna take that back. I mean, it's not like you know, I'm gonna take that back. I mean, it's not like you know, I'm gonna take that back. I mean, it's not like you know, I'm gonna take that back. I mean, it's not like you know, I'm gonna take that back. I mean, it's not like you know, I'm gonna take that back. I mean, it's not like you know, I'm gonna take that back. I mean, it's not like you know, I'm
the briefs and shirts are amazing. So shout out to them. We are the champion. That is Landy Lada, the uh, middleweight champion, as he takes on Gary Spike O'Sullivan next Saturday night, May 28th from Barclays Center in Brooklyn. It is the co-main event of Gervonta Davis and Rolando Romero alongside Daniel Alvarez, who's going to be translating as well. As you like his baseball hat, that's my favorite baseball team, but that's another topic for another day. Ed is Landy Lada, though, who has an impressive record taking on Gary Spike O'Sullivan. Ed is Landy, you know, campaigning here at middleweight. How do you feel at 160? ¿Cómo es que te sientes en la 160? Este, me siento súper bien en la 160. En la 160 me siento bien, estoy listo. Tell us about your opponent, Gary Spike O'Sullivan, a guy who's aggressive, comes forward, 37 years of age. How do you preview your opponent? Platícanos de Spike. Obviamente tiene un estilo bien agresivo, viene para adelante. No, no, no sé ni cómo pelea. No sé, sinceramente, no sé. Solamente yo me preparo para, para ese sábado 28 de mayo. Yo no veo video, como estoy cansado de decirlo, no veo pelea de boxeo y vamos a ver cómo viene. He's like, honestly, I couldn't tell you how he fights. I don't watch any boxing. You know, uh, I leave that for my coaches. I'm just focused on the 28th of May. I really couldn't tell you how he fights. What does it mean for you to be returning to Barclays Center, a venue that you thoroughly dominated Terrell Gache back in October of 2017? But what is the significance for you to be returning back to Brooklyn and fighting in front of a very passionate fight fans yeah, in Barclays Center? ¿Qué tan grande es regresar a Brooklyn, Nueva York? Obviamente, tuviste una gran pelea con Terrell Gache hace unos cuantos años y mm -hmm. mucha uh, afición ahí en Nueva York. No, me, me siento contento de estar de regreso ahí en, en Nueva York. De este, verdad que me ha ido súper bien y para mí es un orgullo de, de, de ser la coestelar de, de Bante Davis y Romero y estamos bien. He's like, no, I'm excited to go back to New York. It's gone very well for me in New York. And I'm excited to be on uh, Showtime pay-per-view come in event for Javante Davis. What is the chemistry like and why is it so special between you and Ismael Salas? Also now we see that Luis Cuba Arias is working with you as well. He stated that he's learned quite a bit from you and Ismael Salas. But tell us about the chemistry that you have with your head trainer, Ismael Salas. Platícanos de la, de la relación entre usted y el profe Ismael Salas. Obviamente también está la I Cuba Arias. ¿Qué tan especial es la relación con uh, el profe? No, nosotros tenemos una relación súper bien, súper buena, junto con Arias, junto con los boxeadores. De, de ahí de gimnasio, nos llevamos bien, estamos trabajando y eh, yo y Ari estamos trabajando mucho en los sparring, estamos bien y nos llevamos bien con el entrenador. No, we have a very great relationship, not just uh, with Coach Arias, uh, you know, with el profe, but also Cuba Arias and, you know, the rest of the team, we all work very well. Uh, Cuba and I get great sparring together and it's been great camp and we really push each other. Assuming you handle business next Saturday, May 28th, on Showtime pay-per-view, on the undercard of Gervonta, Davis, Rolando, Romero, what's next for Edislandi Lada at 160? Ganando el próximo sábado, 28 de mayo, ¿qué sigue para Edislandi Lada en las 160 libras? Bueno, ganando el, el 28 de mayo, estoy listo peleando contra los mejores de la división. Estoy cansado de mencionar los nombres, no los voy a mencionar hoy porque siempre los menciono y nunca salen. Listo para pelear con cualquiera de la división. He's like, look... Come May 28th, I come out victorious. I'm ready to fight with the best of the division. I'm not even going to mention their names because I'm tired of doing it. I keep doing it. I'm tired of doing it. I'm not going to do it today. I'm just ready to fight with the best of the division. So why do you feel that some of the top names, I mean, you were reigning at 154 and now 160. Why do you feel that some of the top names don't want to fight you? ¿Por qué cree que muchos de los nombres en la 160 de los mejores no quieren pelear con usted? Fue lo mismo en la 154. Es lo mismo, soy un boxeador muy complicado, un boxeador muy difícil, creo que soy un riesgo para todos. He's like, no, it's the same thing, 154, 160, I am a tough fighter for anybody, so that's why they don't want to fight me. I find a question to you, Adislandi, as you're getting ready to work out, but what kind of statement, what are you looking to do next Saturday against Gary Spike O'Sullivan, the co-main event of your matchup where you put your 160-pound championship on the line? ¿Qué es lo que piensa hacer el próximo sábado 28 de mayo contra Gary Spike O'Sullivan? No, pues, primero que todo, voy a salir bien enfocado, voy a salir a hacer mi trabajo, lo que yo sé, lo que yo sé hacer, y salir victorioso. He's like, no, I'm going to come out focused, I'm going to come out, do what I know how to do, and most of all, come out victorious. That is Landy, the American Dream Lotta, ladies and gentlemen. He's a champion at 160. He takes on Gary Spike O'Sullivan. We're going to now watch him work out here at the famed Mayweather Boxing Club in Las Vegas.
Yeah, the control for the AC. I wish, man. <laughs> you usually got the heat on in here. I know. I remember the Floyd. Uh, Fuck that. Okay, and then August before the September fight. Yeah. The 115. It's hot enough already. Man. You go outside and you feel like a cool breeze from yeah, the heat outside. Yeah, it's hot. I know. <laughs> but all the sweat. It's bad. I really used to always have a ice chest full of waters, and I drink like six of them. What's up? You didn't see the article on Hat I did it already. You never you did it? I didn't know. I haven't seen it. That when I did it, I was on my way to Orlando. I, I, can't, I can't believe Rick didn't put that up there. I turned it in. Over. He should have probably lost a little bit of steam. Yeah, he should have put it in. Especially when I saw it. Oh, well. Oh, well, I think about it. Yeah. Yeah. You are watching the Edis Landi Lada workout as the 160 pound champion will match up and defend his crown against Gary Spike O'Sullivan next Saturday, May 28th. It is the co main event of Gervonta Davis, Rolando Roli Romero, the lightweight showdown live on Showtime pay per view promoted by 
Mayweather Promotions, GTD Promotions, and a TGB Promotions. It is presented by Premier Boxing Champions. We go live next Saturday night, May 28th, Memorial Day weekend at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific time. You do not want to miss this fun card and this exciting night of boxing brought to you by Showtime Championship Boxing as Ed Islandi Lada, who is certainly one of the most unique and difficult opponents to deal with. His record, 28 wins, 3 losses, 3 draws, 16 wins coming by way of Naka as he was the longest reigning super welterweight champion before losing a split decision to Jared Hearn in a 2018 fight of the year return from that to battle former champion Brian Castaño to a draw at Parkway Center back in March of 2019. Most recently moved up to 160 as he scored a first round knockout over Thomas Lamana in May of last year to capture his middleweight title. And he has been inside the ring against the who's who in boxing, including Canelo Alvarez. So it is Landy Lada currently in the ring now as you see him with his team, Bob Santos, who is one of the wisest cornermen in all of boxing. He's been with Lada for quite some time as his lead trainer happens to be none other than Ismail Salas. And we saw Ismail Salas in the corner of your Dennis Hukas on Showtime pay-per-view last month in front of nearly 40,000 fans. Errol Spence victorious over Ismail Salas' is pupil in your Dennis Ugas, but it is Landy Latam is very focused and determined ahead of his showdown against Gary Spike O'Sullivan from Barclay Center in Brooklyn. Back to the Edislandi Edislandi Lada workout in front of the media here at the Fane Mayweather Boxing Club in Las Vegas again next Saturday, May 28th, brought to you by Mayweather Promotions, GTD Promotions, and TGP Promotions. at the famed Mayweather Boxing Club here in the fighting capital of the world. That is Landy Lada's opposition, Gary Spike O'Sullivan, next Saturday, May 28th from Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Lada victorious over Terrell Gachet back in October of 2017 
at Barclays Center. That is a very passionate and enthusiastic fan base for boxing. It is great that Big Time Boxing is back at Barclays Center. Compliments of Premier Boxing Champions, Mayweather Promotions, GTD Promotions, and TGB Promotions. Gervonta Davis has had some monumental moments at Barclays Center. Captured his first world title by wiping out Jose Pedraza as we say our goodbyes to Jesus Ramos and his family as they exit the gym. And you see at Islandi Lara meeting with the media here and talking with various media outlets here in Las Vegas ahead of his co-main event matchup against none other than Gary Spike O'Sullivan. And coming up, we're going to be talking with the undefeated lightweight contender, 14-0 with 12 knockouts, Rolando Roley Romero. The trash talk has reached a fever pitch between Romero and Trevante Davis. It is a lightweight showdown without question between these two combatants next Saturday, May 28th from Barclays Center in Brooklyn. As we continue to inch closer to our conversation with Roly Romero, the press conference was certainly quite eventful. Uh, neither man, Gervonta Davis or Roly Romero, are without an opinion. They are certainly very opinionated, certainly have a great deal of belief in their own respective abilities. As Gervonta Davis is one of the most electrifying fighters in all of boxing today, he has a massive knockout percentage to his dossier, that being his resume. And he is looking to put forth another impressive performance against Rolando Romero. Incidentally, you saw Javante Davis victorious over Isaac Cruz at what was a very compelling contest at what was the last event that I can recollect at Staples Center. Now it's called Crypto.com Arena. And the crowd was very passionate and into the fight at Staples Center in Los Angeles. And now Trevante Davis is taking his hat cross country to Brooklyn at Barclays Center as he defends his championship against Rolando Roli Romero. So that is on tap 11 nights from now during Memorial Day weekend. And you know what? Get your family and friends together. It's a long holiday weekend. And watch an outstanding night of boxing because these guys are going to throw down against one another they don't like each other they have been adamant that i don't like you you don't like me we're going to settle our differences inside the ring at barclays center talk about what is going to be an electric atmosphere and i know they mentioned i've been mentioning that word a lot electric but it's the truth trevante davis when he hits you he really puts a lot of force and power and speed. He's the complete package as a fighter. Rolando Romero Roli is a unique personality. He's physical. He's tough. He's coming off of a win over Anthony Yigget, the Olympian, the Swedish Olympian, last July in San Antonio on the undercard of Jermel Charlo Brian Castaño number one. And I think it's so fitting that, you know what, last week we saw Jermel Charlo in the rematch Finish off Brian Castagne to become the undisputed super welterweight champion of the world. And now, lo and behold, Rolando Romero has his opportunity to go ahead and potentially dethrone Gervonta Tank Davis. Now, right now, everyone is trying to make a case for who is the best lightweight in the world. Well, the guys at the top that hold the belts, they have to keep winning in order to continue to make that claim. Gervonta Davis has been very vocal saying that he wants to fight the best of the best and he's got to get past Rolando Romero. Rowley has stated that he's going to knock out Gervonta Davis in one round or less. I can't remember anybody making a prediction like that against Gervonta Davis. Another thing we've been talking about, the fact that we've never seen Gervonta Davis sort of be, you know, antagonize someone chastise him someone rip on him so how is he going to fight with someone who's trying to get under his skin at the end of the day 11 days from now the talking will dissipate but from now until fight night i look forward to talking with rolando romero i look forward to seeing the press conference next week and one thing i'll tell you right now showtime championship boxing 
we are in the midst of an unbelievable schedule. Why? I don't know. Because last week, we had Jermel Charlo victorious over Brian Castaño in a super welterweight unification matchup at the War Grounds in Carson, California, known as Dignity Health Sports Park. This Saturday, we're literally going to go from here in Las Vegas, and we're going to go to Glendale, Arizona. Why? Because you have David Benavides, the undefeated super middleweight, go head-to-head -head against David Lemieux. Both guys are hard-hitting power punchers. I was in Phoenix during David Benavides' last outing, a very impressive performance over Ronald Ellis, if I stand corrected. That was in Phoenix. The fans love David Benavides, and now he's fighting in Glendale, about 30 minutes away from Phoenix, and it's going to be a showdown at 168 with David Benavides and David Lemieux. Someone is getting knocked out in that one. Then we follow it up with Trevante Davis and Rolando Romero next Saturday, May 28th, from Barclays Center in Brooklyn. And we're not done yet, because the week after, at the Armory in Minneapolis, you have Stephen Fulton, who's back in the ring after a tremendous performance where he unified the 122-pound division. He will take on Daniel Roman June 4th from the Armory in Minneapolis out in the Twin Cities. So what a run for Showtime Championship Boxing. Four straight weeks of action. Three of those on Showtime Championship Boxing. One of them on Showtime Pay-Per-View next week is brought to you by Mayweather Promotions along with GTD Promotions and also TGB Promotions. And like we talked about, this card from top to bottom going to be an exciting matchup. You have Eduardo Ramirez matching up against Luis Melendez. That is Mexico against Puerto Rico. Eduardo Ramirez is a southpaw known as Zurdito, that being the southpaw. Then we'll go up to 154 pounds with Jesus Mono Ramos, who's undefeated, 18 and 0, 15 knockouts, 21 years of age from Casa Grande, Arizona, trained by his father, now has strength and conditioning coach Larry Wade in his corner. He will match up against Luke Santamaria, who incidentally defeated his uncle, Abel Ramos, back in February and nearby Mandalay Bay Event Center, Michelob Ultra Arena, if I am correct. Co-made event will be at 160 at Islandi Lada, fresh off of a first-round knockout over Thomas Romano, where he picked up a title. He will put that crown on the line as his opponent next Saturday, May 28th, will be Gary Spike O'Sullivan from Ireland. Gary Spike O'Sullivan comes forward, brings pressure, and will no doubt be trying to make at Islandi Lada uncomfortable and then in our main event the showdown that is certainly going to catch the attention of the boxing public because everyone's curious to see how both men are going to handle one another Rolando Romero he's awkward he has a very unique style that has served him well over the course of his career he's just 26 years of age as he will go ahead and be looking to dethrone Cervante Tank Davis and you know, Rolando Romero currently in the building. He's going to be jumping in the ring to work out. And after he's done working out, we're going to talk with him and have a full length conversation. I'm going to ask him about a variety of different topics as to why he doesn't like Javante Davis, why he's predicting a first round knockout. And we will try to analyze and get his thoughts as we are 11 days away until Rolando Romero, Roley himself, has the biggest fight of his life against Trevante Davis. Also this week, the debut of All Access this Saturday night. You do not want to miss it. It is Showtime All Access, as now we will go over and watch Rolando Romero get ready to wrap his hands as he is always uh, dressed and has a unique sense of fashion and style. And once he's done working out, we'll talk with Roley himself and get his opinion on his adversary, Trevante Davis. And I'm actually going to ask him, I'm curious to see if he's going to stick by his prediction of a first-round knockout over Trevante Davis. That all to come here as you are watching the Rolando Roly Romero workout here on the Showtime and the PBC social media pages 11 nights away from Fight Night from Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Ray Flores here at the Fame Mayweather Boxing Club here in Las Vegas as we will dive further into detail and look at and examine Roly Romero as he prepares to work out here in Las Vegas.
as we get ready to watch Rolando Roli Romero work out. I'm joined alongside by his esteemed strength and conditioning coach. I mean, my goodness, this man is the trainer of the stars. Kayla Plant, Showtime Sean Porter, Badu Jack, now Jesus Ramos. Been with Roli Romero for quite some time. Coach Wade, thank you so much. You're the strength and conditioning coach. You get these guys shredded. They're unbelievable athletes, but they become superior athletes under your guidance. Let's talk about Rolando Romero and Gervonta Davis. What has been the theme of all the camp? Listen, first of all, let me say I'm super excited for this fight. I mean, super excited. For those who don't know, Roley has wanted this fight for the length of time that I've ever known him. So it's finally he gets an opportunity to get what he's been looking for. He's excited for it. And for those who are watching, if you haven't got your pay-per-view purchased yet, you're going to want to buy it because I can promise you it's going to be exciting. You're going to see your fireworks. And it's not going to go the distance. I can promise you that. And the uh, the bad blood is real. This is not fabricated. They both don't like each other. This is true. You know, both these guys have history. And when you've got two guys under the same banner, Mayweather promotions, and I guess each person wants to be the king of that division, not only of that division, but the promotion. And when you've got personal history like that, it makes things a little bit, give you a little bit more incentive to get the work done. So Roley has trained his ass off. He did not take this lightly. He got a second chance at success. So we're looking for him to do something amazing that night. He put all this effort into it. So if Javante or anyone else thought this was going to be an easy fight, they're wrong. Do you think that the physicality, because Roly Romero comes from a judo background, and he is unorthodox, and people say, well, technically he's not doing things correctly as you would see by the book, but I think that his unorthodox style benefits him. Do you agree with that? Well, first of all, he does do things by the books. It just looks different, right? And that's what people have a problem with. He doesn't have to be standard. He they think he's not in line. The reality of it is, if you look down at all the people in that division, you're going to have a hard time finding a guy who's as explosive as he is and can throw power the way he throws power. So you're going to get to see all that that night has been so vocal and has been poking the bear that is Javante Davis. I've never seen anybody try to play the mental games and these mind games with Javante. Has that made Roley Romero work that much harder compared to any other camp that you've been with him? Well, he's worked hard every camp, right? And he definitely put a little extra effort into this camp. But who's to say those are actually games? You know, you said they're mental games. A lot of that stuff Roley believes. You know, he's he's been living this for a long time. He feels like he has something to prove, and, and this is his opportunity. So a lot of things that he says, he actually feels deep down inside. Now, there are some times when he's joking and having fun with him, but for the most part, when he tells me or tells you guys that he's not a fan of this guy, he's serious. When he's telling guys he wants to knock this guy out, he's serious, and that's been his focus from the very beginning. So there's nothing fake about that. Coach Wade, how do you see the fight going down next Saturday, May 28th, 11 days from now on Showtime Pay-Per-View? A knockout. Definitely a knockout. Coach Larry Wade joining us here as we continue to watch Roley Romero work out ahead of his lightweight showdown with the gold on the line against Trevante Tank Davis from Barclay Center in Brooklyn.
So now we are with the esteemed trainer of Rolando, Roly Romero, Bullet Cromwells. We're watching Roly Romero inside the ring working out. Coach, thank you so much for joining us as we are 11 days away until your pupil steps inside the ring for the biggest fight of his life with the lightweight world championship on the line against Trevante Davis. How's camp been? Camp has been extremely great, really good, every aspect of it. This has been a camp where there is such a belief from Roly and you that you guys believe that you're going to be able to knock out Trevante Davis. Let's talk about the animosity between the two. Uh, where does it all stem from? Well, it all stems from just being a big businessman. You come to Vegas to spar, you show up to spar. That's it. And then can you, for those that don't know the story, can you tell us about what happened? Was it the fact that I always believe that the truth lies somewhere in the middle, but from your perspective, what happened when it came to that sparring? It's just, uh, you know, if you if you do a, make a deal with somebody, you say, okay, I'm going to meet you here at a certain time. Be a man and just show up. So you guys are saying that Gervonta Davis did not show up to sparring? Twice. Waste our time. Twice. So twice. It wasn't just once, it was twice. Twice. But I think it's the beauty of this fight. He don't know what to expect now. He don't know what he's in there against. So instead of us being kind of like, okay, that should happen, we're glad it did happen. So because of the fact that Roly Romero comes from a judo background, that he's physical, he has a unique style uh, to him inside the ring, do you think that is going to give Gervonta Davis problems next Saturday, May 28th on Showtime Pay-Per-View? A lot of problems, more problems than he's ever seen in his career. So where do you feel that the advantages lie for Roly, not just with the physicality? Well, he's very hungry. He's very... His intangibles, like you said, and nothing to do with physicalities. The intangibles, the will, the willingness to win, the one that goes in to press the fight every time the bell rings, the one that want to be the other guy. That's what's going to make the winner. Where do you feel has there been, you know, because of the fact that Roley is an underdog? Do you guys pay attention to that? Do you give it any sort of, you know, acknowledgement, or does it not play any mind? There is no such thing as A-side, B-side in boxing. It's all in the fighter's head if somebody can manipulate you to believe that you're a B-side. If you step into that ring, you got every chance to knock him out as anybody else. You know what I'm saying? It goes either way. Whoever, like I said, whoever has the will to win, will find a way to win. Do you think that Gervonta is underestimating Roly Romero? By far. The whole world of boxing underestimates Roly Romero. And why is that? They keep him out of every conversation. When they talk about the top four guys and top five guys in the lightweight division, you know what I'm saying? It's pretty much like, oh, where's Roly's name? He's number one WBA, but you're talking about Ryan Garcia, you're talking about Pitbull Cruz. What the hell is that? You know what I'm saying? Get this man some respect. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you believe that because he's not mentioned in the conversations that already he's coming into this fight with a chip on his shoulder? Oh, we got a major chip on our shoulder. I got a chip on my shoulder as a coach. So I know my fighter. I know I know it's mine. He has a lot to prove to the world. He's going to prove it. How would you say that training camp has been in the sense that you don't want to overexert your fighter with a lot of emotion being involved in this fight. It's easy to keep pushing, pushing, pushing. How do you make sure that he stays fresh for fight night? Uh, we, we just, it's just another day in the office every day. We just do what we normally do. You know, we're just preparing for it. Hey, you know, when you go into a fight, a lot of people try to prepare for the guy's last fight or how he fought some other guys. You can't prepare for somebody that's going to fight Roly. I mean, or Roly can't prepare for Tank to fight like he fought somebody else. They got to prepare for each other. You know what I'm saying? And that preparation really just basically is conditioning. Strength, mind strength, mind toughness. Because in the ring, he's not going to show Roly what he showed the people. He won't stand there to get punched. How would you assess Gervonta's last performance against Isaac Cruz? Um, he won. I mean, that's how he says that's boxing. And also, Roly Romero, my final question to you. The entire team has said one round knockout in favor of Roly Romero. Are you sticking with that prediction? That's Roly's energy. That's what he feels. Me, I'm ready for one or 16. Because I know he's ready for one or 16. They're the one that's going to gas out, not us. Oh, he want to think about one one round knockout? Third eye, that's what like Tank said. Listen, bro, <laughs> if you step in and feel froggy, you're going to sleep early. If you want to box and run around like a little girl, then that's what we're going to do, 12 rounds. Just for you. Have you thought about what a jam-packed Barclays Center in Brooklyn is going to be like when you guys make your ring walk? Yeah, of course. It's going to be electrifying. It's going to be a, one of the greatest moments in the lightweight division and the greatest moment of Roley's life, you know what I'm saying, in his boxing career. It's going to be monumental. It's huge. 
not we're not nowhere near um, trying to play that down like some people. We know how big it is. It is huge. Well, Bullet, good luck to you guys. We look forward to seeing you next week during Fight Week. Thank you. Bullet Cromwell, the esteemed trainer of Rolando Rolly Romero, back to Rolly's workout here in Las Vegas.
What's that? Yeah, you need to right now. You're watching the Roly Romero workout as the unbeaten lightweight contender takes on Gervonta Davis for the lightweight championship of the world next Saturday, May 28th, 11 days from now, live on Showtime pay-per-view from Barclays Center in Brooklyn. All brought to you by Mayweather Promotions, GTD Promotions, and a TGB Promotions presented by Premier Boxing Champions. If you are in the Brooklyn area and if you've never been to a prize fight or if you have, there is nothing like a big fight at Barclays Center, especially on Memorial Day weekend. Or if you're wherever you are around the country, invite your family, friends over, have a cookout, watch the fights in the comforts of your own home. And all you have to do is order it live on Showtime Pay-Per-View as we have four exciting fights coming your way in our main event, Bad Blood Between the Two, as these two do not like each other. There is certainly quite a bit of animosity between Gervonta Davis and Roly Romero. Both men undefeated, both men with high knockout percentages, both men looking to prove that they are superior than the other. Again, back to Roly Romero working out here in Las Vegas at the legendary Mayweather Boxing Club. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how to put this in. This is why we don't give motherfuckers technology, man. man this, is my first time. this is my first time with the Apple Watch. I feel brand new on Apple Watch.
All right, we are going to be joined alongside by the unbeaten lightweight contender, Rolando Roli Romero. So one more round of Rolando Roli Romero working out, and then we're going to talk with him and get his thoughts on him, his impending showdown against Javante Davis as he's working with his trainer, Bullet Cromwell, as you see the physique of Rolly Romero back to his workout here in Las Vegas. We are awaiting Rolando Roli Romero as he will take on Gervonta Davis next Saturday, May 28th from Barclays Center in Brooklyn. As you see Roli Romero currently in the ring right now, we are efforting him to get a word with the unbeaten lightweight contender as he matches up against Gervonta Davis. Next Saturday night on a Showtime pay-per-view. All right, we're going to grab Rolly Romero right now. As we appreciate him taking time out from his workout. And I got to say, Rolly, you look in impeccable physical shape. As you are with the CEO of Mayweather Promotions, Leonard Ellerby, 
Roly, is this the best you've ever felt heading into a prize fight? Man, I always feel good every time I go into a fight. I always feel good. So this fight with you and Javante Davis, no love lost between you two. How much do you dislike Tank? I don't like him as a person. I think he's a piece of shit person. And honestly, he's going to get his ass whipped because he's a fucking piece of shit for the sport too. What did you take away from the press conference that you had with him about a month ago at Barclays Center in Brooklyn? Did you take anything away from the stare down and, and you guys going back and forth? No. He's just, the, it's just a bunch of nervous energy. He ain't saying shit. He, he's not even, he don't even think he'll knock me out. He can't do shit. He, he a bitch. Why are you so confident? You said during the press conference, I'm going to knock him out in one round. As we're 11 days away until you step inside the ring against the hard-hitting Javante Davis, the undefeated Javante Davis, you're also undefeated. Are you sticking with that prediction of a one-round knockout? One round. If I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Why is that? What do you see What do you see in his game that you feel you can... Let me, let me ask you this. Tell me a fight he don't get punched on by smaller dudes that have no power, no nothing. Tell me a fight. I'm way more accurate than everyone he's ever fought. Way more explosive, way stronger, way bigger than everybody else. So, I mean, it is common sense. One key component to your game that I feel like you don't, that you do compared to other lightweights is that you're physical. You come from a judo background. Do you think your physicality is going to play a factor in the fight? No. He's going to get knocked out from the first point that he eats. So why? I know you mentioned about that he's shorter than you. Do you think that your reach and your height is going to be a, a factor into your benefit? I mean, of course. But I mean, like I said, he's just going to run right into something he's small. So this, the bad blood from what I gather stems from the fact that they were supposed to be sparring, it didn't happen once, it didn't happen twice. Is that where all this bad blood sort of manifested itself? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, if I say I want to spar somebody, I'll spar somebody, right? And like, I mean, he, sh he, he ducked me twice even then, so. I mean, I've been calling him out since 2017. The reason why the fight's made is because I want it, not because he wants it. He don't want the shit. If we wish, he could fight some other 126, 122-pounder. It took you some time to get this fight, and lo and behold, now you have it. Isaac Cruz fought him back in December. What was your assessment of his fight against Isaac Cruz? He got his ass being assured that he's extremely vulnerable and that he's scared of people that can crack. You have Joel Casamayor in your corner as well. He has yeah, been yeah, in yeah. the ring. <laughs> El Campeon himself. How much of a benefit has Joel Casamayor been to you in this camp? And Joel's very confident in your abilities. I mean, I mean, just watching him, you know, he's a slick southpaw, you know, so, I mean, I learned a lot, you know, especially on, you know, moving around and all that stuff, you know, being accurate. I mean, he's been in my corner even when I was an amateur. He's seen me knock out so many people in the amateurs. Joel, what makes him special? Go, go, I'm ready, go. Ready for the fight. Now, Roly, if you could give one message to Gervonta Tank Davis right now, you're both undefeated, the lightweight championship of the world's on the line, Showtime pay-per-view, jam-packed, sold-out crowd, Barclay Center, what do you want to tell Tank right now? I don't got no message for his bitch ass, I only got these fists. Rolando Roly Romero, ladies and gentlemen, joining us, don't miss, Rolando Romero, Gervonta Davis, Leonard Ellerby, bad blood, we love big fights. But I love big fights with animosity and bad blood. Does it get any hotter than these two? No, it, it doesn't. Um, he's been asking me for this fight for like three years. Every time he sees me, he's been asking. He want to fight Tank. Want to fight Tank. And now's the opportunity. You know, we right we right here. Close to the fight, he's in terrific shape, and I expect it's going to be a terrific fight. And Leonard, also, one thing that people fail to realize is that Roley has a high knockout percentage. We know what Tank can do, but Roley has a high knockout percentage as well. So two heavy hitters getting inside the ring at Barclays Center. Most definitely, and that's, that's why I tell all the fans, this is a very dangerous fight for both guys. Um, you know, Tank is one of the best fighters in the entire world right now. He's very slick. He has... Tremendous skills that he hadn't had a chance to really showcase his boxing skills. Everyone knows he's a tremendous puncher. And when you look at Roley, like I said, he does some things that are, are very different. He's an awkward fighter. Um, but sometimes that those kind of things work to your advantage. Um, I've seen awkward fighters be very successful, um, just to name a couple. Ricardo Mayorga, Juan Rodon, um, Marcos Madonna. Um, I'm glad you brought the name Mayorga because Roley reminds me of the lightweight version of Mayorga, yes, but being here from Las Vegas. Yeah, yes, yes, he does. Saki Obika. You know, just, you, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to prepare for guys who 
aren't the traditional, you know, guys to, with, with their styles. So, again, it's going to be a, a very, very entertaining fight, and I expect this fight to end definitely in a knockout. Leonard, I've known you for well over a decade, but the one thing I noticed when Floyd was in his prime doing his thing is that anybody that fought Floyd became a name. Now we're starting to see that with Javante Davis. Look at what he's at Cruz. His name elevated because he was in the ring and he fought valiantly. Now, Rolando Romero, Roly, people are talking about Roly. Is that what we're starting to see, that Tank's name is so big that now his opponents become a name when they fight him? Well, that's what happens. And, you know, again, I reiterate, Tank's one of the best fighters in the world. And um, he's a big-time attraction. And everyone wants to come out and see him fight. And, and, again, so any fight that he's involved in is a big fight. My last question to you. I know that the pay-per-view is going to be off the charts, but how many ticket requests are you getting from <laughs> NBA players, from hip-hop artists? Because Tank and Roly, this fight is transcending and is getting into mainstream pop culture. Oh, most definitely. I mean, I, I've gotten so many calls <laughs> daily, you know, but there just aren't going to be enough tickets to go around. Um, there will be hundreds of people waiting outside thinking they're going to be able to not going to happen. Tune in. May the 28th, a jam-packed, sold-out event, and it's going to be a tremendous fight between two excellent fighters. That's a man who knows how to do it. The CEO of Mayweather Promotions, Leonard Ellerby, on behalf of Rolando Romero, Edis Landi Alada, Jesus Ramos, and Luis Arias Amre Flores saying so long from Las Vegas. 11 days from now, Memorial Day weekend, Tank and Roly on Showtime pay-per-view. Do it. Listen to this man because he's been around a few big fights or two. We'll see you guys next week in Brooklyn. Gervonta Tank Davis is one of boxing's biggest stars and a stone-cold knockout artist. But top contender and trash talk champion Rolando Roli Romero wants his shot. I'm going to knock Tank out and as simple as that. On May 28th. That's all you do is talk. Davis versus Romero for the 135-pound world title, Saturday, May 28th, live on pay-per-view.